All right, so today we're going to be talking about BMW E36 transmissions, uh, more specifically the automatic. So uh, recently I've been having problems with the car where the shift points are kind of funky, um, and I'm having issues uh, on the freeway from it shifting from third into fourth, it seems like, because I'll, I'll be driving down the freeway and it goes about 35,000 RPM, which is pretty high at 65 miles per hour. So... Um, Basically, there's a few things I'm going to be doing to test this out. Uh, number one uh, would be to use the automatic mode or the manual mode, uh, which is here. Um, and basically, essentially, what you do with that is uh, you set this down to number one, two, and three when you shift, be like shifting gears, but without a clutch. So uh, that's the first thing I'm going to be doing is uh, testing that. And uh, normally, what happens is when I'm driving the car, it will. Once I get it about to third gear, it kind of starts wigging out. Uh, basically, what it'll start doing is it'll start uh, slipping a little bit. And then uh, definitely when it gets onto fourth gear, or if it does get into fourth gear, um, it, it completely slips at that point, and there's nothing you can do about it um, except for pull over. The light did come on one time. The light, uh, let me show you real quick, is right there. That light right there. Uh, basically, that means your transmission, uh, there's some sort of issue. So it's either between... Uh, uh, some sort of hydraulic issue, or uh, one of the one of the, the solenoids inside the transmission is not working properly, because uh, that transfers the flow of fluid from one side to the other and controls drums and uh, all sorts of other stuff. So, um, so with that being said, basically we're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and start the car up, and we're going to select manual mode. Now, if you notice, the light will actually turn on when you do that, and what you can do is you can select first gear I've already taken as you can see the instrument panel part I gotta check the switch underneath here to make sure it's working properly and I'm pretty sure it is but I also kind of want to clean things up and also move the uh, the selector the selector seems to be off a little bit so I gotta fix that as well so um, normally how you do this is when you drive um, you'll be driving along um, and what you'll get is the RPM will stay the same until you switch the gear and then it'll drop down to the next gear and then you can go ahead and switch the next one after that which is the three and it should drop down after that now using this mode it's more and see that's kind of the weird transmission stuff that I'm getting uh, so I'm going to drop this down to one uh, basically uh, what you're looking to do is just make sure that uh, the, the gear selection uh, is working on the transmission because that means the solenoids are working properly. So there's a couple sets of solenoids in there. There's uh, a set for first and second gear, uh, a set for uh, third and fourth, and I think there's some uh, intermedi intermediate ones in between those that make it work uh, better. Let me drop this down to one. So um, that's a way that you can test your transmission to see if everything's working properly electronically. So as you can see here, I'm in first at a stop sign. That's second, and that's third, which it kind of bogs a lot down on that one. So I'm thinking the solenoids on the second and third are, are either clogged uh, or there's issues with the solenoids and I may need to replace them. I'm going to do the simple fix right now, uh, which is essentially um, changing the fluid uh, and just kind of make sure everything's kind of clean. I got up there the other day and the fluid wasn't exactly completely red looking. So now in manual mode, if it's in second, like it is right now, it, you'll end up getting something like that. So if you switch it down to first, so you have to remember when you're in manual mode, you have to actually use it like a gear shift in a car and make sure that it works properly. So um, there'll be some more uh, updates on this soon, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I've been researching a lot of the transmission problems on this car, uh, trying to fix it myself because obviously I don't want to take it into a shop to get this fixed. So uh, if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Uh, thanks again once, again once again for watching. And remember, do your thing, guys. Thanks. Wow, CHP. All right, so I test drove the car after I changed the ATF fluid. Uh, it was 
driving around block and whatnot for probably about five minutes and then I decided to switch it over to manual mode. Um, when I did that, first, second was cool. Third, when I got up to third, all of a sudden uh, I was up at probably about 4,000. Uh, I switched it, it ran up to about 5,000, uh, five, five and a half, and then check engine light came on and the gearbox light came on. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull up the computer and read the code on this before uh, I turn the car off. So uh, stay tuned guys, there'll be more. All right, so I hooked the computer up to the uh, control module on the car uh, to tell or to see what was going on with it with the check engine light and the other thing. Uh, the check engine light came on because of uh, the catalytic converter, which I kind of already knew would shot. Um, it was just telling me, hey, your thing's broken, so that's cool. Um, thank you for telling me that. But the other one is uh, this one here, which is, uh, if my German's correct, or and I know a little bit of German, but not, not enough to be fluent in it basically it's saying the uh, uh, engine speed sensor or the the car speed sensor uh, or the magnetic control valves um, or the hydraulic control unit need to be checked so I'm assuming uh, since I can go through first and second fine and then when I get the third uh, it starts slipping and fourth isn't even an option I'm guessing it's the solenoids underneath the uh, in the transmission so uh, did a little bit of research and I found um, these here and there is a setting in here for where there's a thing in here that tells you the specific uh, ohm settings for each one of the um, solenoids, magnetic valve solenoids. So I'm going to be pulling the bottom of the transmission out and checking those and kind of just d doing a general overall look. I already did a fluid change. Uh, it seemed to help a little bit. Uh, fluid was kind of a little bit uh, um, dark red. It wasn't the ruby or, or clear red that it normally is. So, um, But the, basically this transmission is an A4310R, uh, I think. Um, that one's for a, another car. So yeah, it's the 310, A4310. So, um, you can find this online. I can't remember where I got it at, um, but if you just look up the transmission for your car uh, with the transmission number, usually you can find some information, technical bulletins and all that other stuff on the net. So um, stay tuned, guys. Um, I'm going to have to order some parts, and I'll be doing a video on basically how to check the uh, solenoids on the underside of the car because uh, there's not a whole lot about how to fix a transmission. People just say, take it into the shop and get it fixed. And you know, I'm looking at a two grand repair bill. Um, and if I buy a used transmission off eBay, I'm looking at about uh, five to a thousand, 500 to a thousand dollars for a transmission. So um, not too stoked about that, but uh, the car's got almost 240,000 miles on it. So that's not bad either. So, uh, but anyways, guys, stay tuned. Uh, there'll be more to come. Uh, thanks for watching, subscribe and like, if this helps you out. And as always guys, do your thing. All right, so uh, here we are with a continuing uh, tragedy of the transmission, or the auto-tragic transmission. Um, went to pick and pull today, picked up another transmission. Uh, here's the old pan from the transmission that's currently in the car, and you can see there's a crap load of um, material in there. Uh, it's all metallic, and you can look at the magnet, and it's coated. Um, it's pretty bad. So... This is the pan, the front pan from the new transmission that I picked up, and it's completely clean. I mean, compared to the other one, it's not as bad. So uh, basically, I had to do transmission swap. Uh, it looks like the inside of the transmission pretty much ate itself up. So you can see there's a giant chunk of metal there. Giant chunk of metal. That's no good. So um, anyways, so I'm going to be swapping out the transmission. It looks like the issue was... Uh, um, the bad transmission and the car has 240,000 miles on it uh the fluid had been only changed once in its lifetime um uh, and uh yeah so looks like uh this transmission's had it i'm probably going to rebuild it most likely going to rebuild it so if there's any problems with this one in the future then i have another backup transmission so but that's pretty much uh the end of this story um don't know if this has helped you out at all, uh, but anyways, you, basically, if you have a bunch of stuff inside your transmission fluid pan, um, like that, I mean, solid chunks of metal, that's not good. And I don't want to be stranded somewhere where, where all of a sudden the transmission decides to just go out. So, um, this new transmission will go in, 
and out with the old one. So um, I may cover that. Uh, it's a bit of a job to do to try and film it at the same time, so maybe I might do it step by step. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe if this has kind of helped you out, or if it has. And um, once again, guys, do your thing. Thanks. All right, so after doing some diagnostics on the car, um, pulling the oil pan or the tranny pan with the fluid out of it, and uh, seeing that there's a whole bunch of uh, metal shavings and a whole bunch of remnants in the bottom of the pan, I uh, decided to pull out a new transmission from Pick and Pull. So here's a new transmission that's going to be going into this car here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get into that. So um, I'll go ahead and go through the steps on what needs to be done uh, to remove the transmission and replace it with a new one. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to work. It was in the same series of cars. Uh, it was probably about a year newer, or older actually, than this car. Uh, so, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and swap it out. So, um. so here we are under the car again. So, um, I've gotten it jacked up here uh, with four jack stands. And uh, just when you do that, make sure the car, you can push on the car that doesn't rock or do anything funny. So, um, here we are with the transmission. I took the covers off. Uh, I'm going to leave them off for now because I actually put them on the other transmission and I'm going to be swapping them out. So uh, before we get to the transmission, there's a few things that we need to remove. So uh, number one is the exhaust flanges. There's one there and there's one back there. So there's two of them there. And just remove the three, three bolts. I believe they're 14, uh, maybe 15 millimeter nuts uh, that you remove. Um, the next thing you need to remove is the cross member that goes across and uh, holds the body together for flex and whatnot. Um, let's see, what else? The, there's the oxygen sensors. So the connector is right uh, right about there, and we need to remove that, and there's a second one as well, and that those are set up behind the cat. Those are the cat after uh, oxygen sensors, and then there's a connector in the back as well for um, the, the valve. Uh, the shut the shut off valve so like when the car starts up there's a, a valve that helps aid in the speeding up the warming of the motor um, it was only put on the US cars which is kind of silly but it's there so I gotta remove it so after I get the remo the exhaust removed I gotta remove the the shield the heat shield which is underneath the exhaust and it's there it runs all the way down to the back of the car I have to remove that and then I have to remove the drive shaft which is underneath that shield so I'll be back in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go step by step through this, but it's uh, it'll be a long process, and uh, we'll get through it. So, okay. So I've went ahead and dropped the tra the um, transmission. I wish the uh, the exhaust. So as you can see here, the exhaust is nice and free. I uh, undid the th six bolts. They were 15 millimeter, and now I'm going to go ahead and remove the clips for the O2 sensors. There's one on that side and one on the other side. Somewhere right there. Right there. So uh, we're going to go ahead and remove that, undo the bolts here, undo the spring, uh, the rubber parts here. So just basically lift up on this and then pull it out. And then after that, I've got to disconnect the back. Uh, there's a, another clip in the back, and then as well as the shutoff valve for the, the warm up. So uh, we'll get in there. All right, so now that we got the Exhaust dropped out of the way, and we have the support part out of the way, and most importantly, the shield out of the way. We can start working on the drive shaft. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and try and do actually is remove the outer sections of the Guibo disc. So, just this one here, this one here, and this one here. So, just those three bolts, and then I should be able to drop it after I take the center support bearing out. So, um, I've also got the drive shaft marked. I've got the e-brake on and, and the transmission's in park, so it's not going to move anywhere right now, but um, when I do that, it's actually marked along the outside edge, I believe up here somewhere, and then back up here uh, of where the alignment is. So I'll just take this section of the drive shaft out um, just by dropping it so I don't have to remove the back. Now, as far as the exhaust goes, I might just leave the exhaust off to the side um, and just kind of work around it because it's... All right, so back under the car again. And now we've got the drive shaft free. I've got this end of the drive shaft just hanging up by, by a bolt on that side. Uh, I took out the bracket and just swung it aside. 
And then uh, now we gotta start disconnecting things like the uh, gear selector, the electrical connection for the solenoids, and up on top up here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not. On this side up here, right about there, uh, let's see. Right about there, there's an electrical connector for the speed sensor for the transmission, so it can tell how fast the transmission's spinning. So that's all set up with the computer and works with all that stuff. So uh, that's the next part. So basically disconnect the transmission. Um, I've got to remove this panel, which uh, is holding in that section there. So I'll just take that out right now, actually. And all those are 10 millimeter bolts. And I think I got one more at the end that I got to take out. Um, no, actually I don't. All right. So i uh, got to take out these. I think these are 14s or 15s. Um, but that's not until I get some of the bolts taken out from the transmission, like the one there, and the one here, and the one right there. So, um, and then I got once I get those out, I'm going to have to drop the transmission down and use a long extension and reach over the top of the transmission to get the ones at the top of the, um, the transmission. So, um, I don't know, I may have uh, a helper film that because it's kind of interesting, but it's not. Um, but anyways, so... All right, so here we are back underneath the car and about ready to put the transmission back in. Now, when I took the transmission off, I left the torque converter uh, right here on, on, the, uh, on the flywheel and then had to remove it later. Um, not only did just to kind of check the condition of it, but also to empty the fluid out. Um, I'm doing a fresh fluid change on everything, so I flushed the lines out with some compressed air. Uh, the, uh, the lines which are right here. Let's see that line there and there's one that goes back there so um, I flushed it out so I'm gonna have to put a full nine quarts of, of uh, ATF fluid in there uh, I'll be using Royal Purple um, it's actually meets the specifications for the lubricancy for the transmission so um, that being the case though uh, I have to install this now so another nice little tip instead of buying a transmission uh, jack you can use a motorcycle stand uh, this is rated at 1,500 pounds. The transmission's probably about, uh, I was guessing it was about 150. It's probably more like 200 than 250 pound range. So, um, but anyways, I'll be shoving this in. Basically, I gotta jack this up and then insert this into the flywheel um, and then bolt the three bolts into the flywheel. And that'll pretty much do it as far as uh, the transmission install or re remove and replace. So, um, Everything else was pretty much simple. We just retach everything um, and go from there. So uh, there'll be an update on this uh, shortly uh, once I get this uh, updated or uh, uploaded. And then uh, I'll be test driving the car just to make sure that everything's good on it. So, um, but yeah, motorcycle jack stand works well for hoisting this heavy thing up. All right, uh, stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, if this has helped you out at all, um, share, like, subscribe, and as always, guys, do your thing. Thanks.